This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Visit them via the link in the description below for all your PCB services. I've been using them for years, so make sure you try them out. I just wanted to drop in here and say many congratulations to PCBWay all the way from Scotland on your 6th anniversary. I have genuinely been using PCBWay for a few years now and for the products that I develop and sell. And the most important thing for me has been the quality of the circuit boards which has been second to none. And I've tried a few. I've just received another batch of 50 boards to keep my PDVS2 mini demand happy and I hardly need a look as I know the quality is going to be spot on. So I hope you guys continue to prosper and expand and I look forward to many more circuit boards from you. To my subscribers and viewers, please do look up the links below this video for some of the great offers available at PCBWay. Thanks for now. Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and today we're going to take a look at my radio cassette recorder um, Sharp GF6060 I've had since the 80s. I did a renovation on this in a video, oh, must be a couple of years ago now. And I do use it from time to time in the workshop, but however, I want to extend its capabilities. And someone actually commented on the video that I'd done the renovation on that maybe I should add Bluetooth uh, connectivity to this unit here. So I thought wow that's a great idea. So I went shopping on eBay for some Bluetooth modules. I've picked up uh, a couple and we're going to test one of them outside of the GF6060 to make sure it uh, does what it says in the tin and then we're going to install the Bluetooth module inside the unit. So the first problem is where am I going to interface the left and right outputs of the Bluetooth module into the tape player circuit. On the actual player itself you've got the tape player here, you've got the radio switch here which actually doubles as a power switch as well. So in other words when the switch here is in the off position actually that's the tape player and as soon as you press a button on the tape player the unit will power up. Hit stop the unit's actually completely powered down. And it's not only until you flick the switch to the radio position that the unit will turn on again and enable the radio circuit. So there is actually no dedicated simple on-off switch. So here is a schematic for the unit. Up the top here you'll see this is the radio section and down here you've got the tape player interface and the mixer preamp and the main power amp here. So here's the main output from the radio section. This is the FM multiplexer here. You've got two lines here, a left and right that come down, away along here and in here into the main preamp mixer on the main board. So here's the left and right from the radio down onto this switch here and it will switch between the radio and the tape player interface coming in here. So what I think I will do is, if I just bring in my little sketch here, what I think I will do, there's the radios coming down, I'm going to fit a new switch which I'm going to put on the rear of the unit, which will allow me to alternate between the radio left and right and my Bluetooth left and right, and then the output from the switches there, those two lines there, will just carry on down onto the original switch inside the unit there. And I think that's the best way for me to do it. I can put this switch on the back panel of the unit. Let's take a look at that now. You've got this little recessed panel here, um, which I am hoping to put another switch here that I can then use as that uh, Bluetooth radio option. So then the only other problem we've got is powering this Bluetooth module. So this unit here runs off of 5 volts. Um, so I doubt very much there's a 5 volt DC power supply on the board here. So I'm going to have to pick up something a little bit bigger and then put a 5 volt regulator alongside this here in order to power it. However, all this is dependent whether this Bluetooth module can do the job or not. So I'm going to hook this up. Uh, offline and uh, I'll come back and we'll give it a little test and I'll try and see if it works. Now I do actually have two Bluetooth modules. They're from the same series of units. This one here is the MH-M38. 
This one here is the MHM18 and the difference between these two here is apart from one of them's got a USB socket on it, this one here has an amplifier built in two little uh, surface mount amplifier ICs there so you actually connect two speakers to the actual output here not really what I wanted, I wanted a line level one so I found this one here like I said same series and I believe this has got line level outputs the reason I say believe is because information is a little bit thin on the ground I did actually find some information here, this is the board here and you've got 5 volt uh, with a 3.7 volt lithium battery option just by removing a diode and you've got um, six connections down here for key, mute, power, ground and left and right outputs and a little bit more on that is here key here actually I think that's an analog input on the board and by way of a voltage divider you can select between pause, next, uh, volume, up and down, on off, that sort of thing there so I th believe that will be optional, I might need to tie it to ground to get it powered up won't know until I actually get it all hooked up you've got a mute option there I believe you could probably ground that as well to mute it but it doesn't really say and then you've got the power coming in here and the left and right outputs there and they've just shown this for information a separate power amplifier ah there we go look you've got this is an output a mute output which comes from the unit so you can send a bluetooth code to mute the output which will then mute your power amp that's what that's doing there and then of course you've got the left and right inputs to the power amplifier and your speakers so I'm going to hook this up here as we've got I'll tie it to my phone and hopefully we'll get it working so I've put 5 volts into it and as you can see I've got a flashing blue light there so it looks like I didn't need to do anything with that uh, key input in terms of the on off looks like it powers up by default so now I'll pair my phone to it um, according to some of the details I've got fast flashing on the blue LED means it's not paired and steady on I think meant it was inactive but paired and then slow flashing meant it was actually processing an audio signal via Bluetooth <laughs> so we'll pair it up and we'll see where we go from there yep paired straight away no passcodes required because of course there's no real way of uh, putting anything on the unit itself so it just paired up straight away from my phone and I've got a steady blue light so now I'll play something through uh, my phone an audio file of some sort and we'll scope the output and we'll see if we're getting a left and right output and importantly I want to have a look and see what the voltage levels are so there we go I'm playing one of my own YouTube videos on my phone and as you can see we've got a blue slow flashing LED on the unit now so let's scope it right we're currently on the right hand output channel so it's off at the moment so I'll just press play on my phone and we're definitely getting something there I'm on one volt per division and AC coupling uh, and yeah it's probably meant to be something along the lines of one volt peak to peak or something maybe a bit more than that but that's good enough for me we can definitely work with that and I'll just go on to the right hand output now the, sorry the left hand output and there we are we're getting exactly the same on that side as well so I think we're good to go on that so Bluetooth module working let's take apart the tape recorder and work on installing this uh, Bluetooth module and see exactly where we can pick up power add in a 5 volt regulator and add the switch to the rear of the unit okay we've got the front cover off giving me good access to the unit again I've forgotten how uh, quite well laid out this uh, unit was for 
I'm working on. So I will need to remove the tape player mechanism to get access to the circuit board. Over this side here we've got the radio board and over this side here we've got the preamp slash power amp board over this side here. So I think what I'm needing to get access to is the underside of that board so I will need to strip it down so we'll see how we get on and see what we can see once we remove the tape player mechanism. This is the tape player mechanism, it's really easy to remove, it's just a couple of header connectors and uh, three or four screws and it just lifts straight out, no problem at all. And uh, there's the belts that I'd replaced when I last serviced it during that last video a couple of years ago. So working okay, so we'll just put it safely to one side. So what I'm looking for is this header here, this two uh, lines here that come across this threshold here must be a header that has an external wiring going away off to the radio board. So hopefully what I can do is is pull the wires from there which will allow me to insert my new wire into the new switch on the back. And this SW101-F and E is the main power switch and it's just contacts, changeover contacts E and F on that switch there. So R119 and R120 are here and here. Uh, sorry you can't see it that easily. This is a bit of a jumble of wires and headers in this unit. So R119, R120. There is this header cable here going away off to the radio board over here. So um, let's try it and see if we can find out which pins are which. I'll just go into R119 and it looks like there's five wires on that header so I'll just go along the pins from the back to the front ah there we go second one in from my end is R119 I'll try R120 and go on to one of the adjacent pins so it's not this one here there we go there we go so I know it's not easy for you to see but it's the second and third wires on that header there that got way off to this board here. So that's the two I need to remove. But before I do that, I actually want to scope it and find out the voltage levels and see if it's somewhere approximating the levels that I've got on the output of the Bluetooth module. Okay, so what I did was I measured the output of the Bluetooth module yeah, roughly one volt peak to peak, maybe a bit more. I also went ahead and scoped the two signals here from the output from the radio board. These two lines here, the left and right, and they're really low. They're about 20 millivolts peak to peak. So I'm going to have to um, put a voltage divider down on the outputs of the two channels of the Bluetooth board and in order to match the signal voltage range of the radio uh, but looking further over onto the output chip of the radio board the mixer here you can see you've got a couple of 470 ohm resistors there down to ground on those two signals on those two 20 millivolt signals so I'm actually going to match that 470 on the voltage divider on my uh, two resistors that I'll add so I'll have something like this here. There's the Bluetooth board coming in here so I'll put a little voltage divider here, the 470 ohm resistor down to ground to match that other side and then I'll have some value, it'll probably be a, quite a big value in there in order to drop the uh, 1 volt, 2 volt peak to peak coming in down to the same voltage level, uh, the 20 millivolts that the radio has got there. That way the impedance and the voltage ranges of both those signals are more or less matched. Right, there's my test rat's nest <laughs> set up there. Resistors in place and what I'm attempting to do now is match the volume of the radio output to the Bluetooth output. It's all well and good doing it in the scope and calculating resistor values but there's nothing like the ear to tell you. Um, of course it's subject to the 
volume of the MP3 that I'm playing on my phone, but I've put the volume level around about 75% on the phone, just to give it a little bit of leeway either way. The volume control on the main tape deck doesn't affect the output. That's the volume controls further down the line on the power amp side. So the volume of the radio output's fixed. So that's good. I've got a baseline I can work to. So unfortunately I can't play that and demonstrate that because YouTube will just catch it because whatever's been playing on the radio and similarly for my song that I'm playing on my phone. Um, so I've got it set up at the moment with a couple of uh, resistors, a 470 ohm and another value. I need to play about with the value. It's still a little bit too loud. I need to increase the size of the value. Uh, but the sound is really clear. It's got a good frequency response um, across the range. So I know I'm in the ballpark for the impedance of the lines, etc. So that there's no odd frequency response going on there. Um, so I just need to play about the two resistor values. So once I've got those resistors set, I can take it all apart and then we can start wiring up the unit, mounting the Bluetooth board with the resistors and then doing some proper wiring. Okay, there's some of the wiring in place. I've managed to drill a hole in the back of the unit and squeeze in a it's a triple pole switch, it's all I had, but I only need two of the poles there. So I've got that in place there, just a toggle switch. And that's it wired up and interfaced into the wiring of that header there. So that's all in place. And of course, just the other two pins here on the switch, which will uh, come from the Bluetooth module. So the next thing I want to do, actually, is to try and see what I've got in, uh, available in terms of DC power supply for the Bluetooth module itself. So let's take a look. So there's the power supply there and it's basically got an unregulated DC that comes from the small board with the transformer on it up onto the main board and then you've got the main decoupling capacitor is on the main board itself. It's not on the little daughter board that houses the uh, four diodes and the transformer etc. So here it is up Along here it powers the main power amp IC and along here snakes off and does a few other bits and pieces and then up onto what they've got here is a ripple filter. That's just an extra bit of active filter in there in order to give the main preamp uh, IC over here as stable a DC supply as possible in order to keep the noise down. So I've actually taken the DC power for the 7805 from the emitter of the ripple filter there and uh, it's about 11.2 volts which is even better and the ground connection I've actually taken from the ground connection on the preamp IC itself. It was just handier to do that. Okay, that's the wiring done. I've got the Vero board with the Bluetooth module fitted over the left hand side here. I've got two uh, coax cables coming from the board, the left and right channels, snaking away across to the back of the switch that you can see here. And there's the back of the unit, there's my toggle switch there. And I've mounted the resistors on the back of the switch to drop the voltage down rather than put them on the Vero board because I didn't want a 20 millivolt signal snaking its way across the chassis and I'd rather have like the 1 or 2 volt signal snaking its way across and then I wanted to drop that voltage down at the very last minute and as you can see there there's the resistors in the back of the switch there and there they tie into the header there the Bluetooth module power is as clean as it possibly can do. And given I've also got my own uh, capacitors on the either side of the 7805 there. However, I've come across a small problem. It probably goes along with the fact I bought a cheap Chinese Bluetooth module. So, so it is a little bit noisy, this Bluetooth module. And I'll show you that now. If I put the volume quite high on the unit here. I'm going to power up the unit. I've got the switch already set to the Bluetooth position, not the radio position. I'm going to put power on and it should you should hear it fairly quiet until the Bluetooth module boots up 
uh, it'll play a little couple of tones as it boots through the speakers of the cassette deck but from then on you should hear a bit of noise actually so here we go, power on now and then you can hear that in the background is actually quite noisy that noise only appears once the Bluetooth module is fully booted up so I'll just do it again, I'll turn the power off and back on again <laughs> as you can hear it's quite noisy but I do have the volume I'll just switch it off I do have the volume quite high on the unit, but between songs, if you're playing anything through the Bluetooth, you can hear it just slightly in the background there. But I'm not too worried about it. I mean, the purpose of this unit here is it's probably going to be used more outside, you know, when we're having barbecues and stuff like that. It'd be great to just carry the cassette deck outside, switch it on, and I can play my MP3 collection in the back garden without running any cables, etc. Well, apart from power, 240 mains, but yeah, that's not a problem. So what I'll do now is I'll put the unit back together, I'll put the tape mechanism back in, and box it all up, and then we'll give it a little bit of a test. So that's it all boxed back up now. I'm playing something through the Bluetooth module now. I'll just turn it up royalty free music off of YouTube. And I can switch to the radio as well. And then back to the MP3. Thanks for watching.